Hello everyone. Welcome to Weary Traveling with Jesus. Thank you to everyone who has supported Weary Traveling with Jesus. Today, 3rd of December 2021, is a Friday of the first week of Advent. Yulita Young from Bali will read a book from Catholic liturgical calendar and a saint story. For formation teaching, is about You Can Get Free by Father Ken Barker, MGL. He is the founder of the Missionaries of God's Love Congregation. After formation teaching part, let's we pray together with Pope Francis for the recovery of the world from the COVID-19 virus, followed to pray Our Father and Hail Mary. Happy listening! If you have an adventure with Jesus, please send to our team your audio, video, or lettering on email wearytravelingwithjesus at gmail.com. Thank you. Happy listening. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to We Read Traveling with Jesus channel, a channel of holy gospel readings available in three languages, Indonesia, English, and Italian. Now you can access the reading in Indonesia and English separately every day, and the readings in Italian available only on Sunday. We hope you enjoy it. St. Francis Xavier's story. St. Francis Xavier was a highly promising academic. He was living and teaching in Paris and came from a good friend Ignatius of Loyola, whose tirelessly persuasion finally won the young man to Christ. Francis then made the spiritual exercises under the direction of Ignatius and in 1534 joined his little community, the Infant Society of Jesus. Together at Montmartre, they vowed poverty, chastity, obedience, and apostolic service according to the directions of the Pope. From Venice, where he was ordained a priest in 1537, Xavier went on to Lisbon and from there sailed to the East Indies landing at Goa on the west coast of India. For the next 10 years, he labored to bring the faith to such widely scattered peoples as the Hindus, the Malayans, and the Japanese. He spent much of that time in India and served as provincial of the newly established Jesuit province of India. Where he went, Xavier lived with the poorest people, sharing their food and rough accommodation. He spent countless hours ministering to the sick and the poor, particularly to lepers. Very often he had no time to sleep or even to say his prayer, but as we know from his letters, he was filled always with joy. Xavier went through the island of Malaysia, then up to Japan. He learned enough Japanese to preach to simple folk, to instruct and to baptize, and to establish missions for those who were to follow him. From Japan, he had dreams of going to China, but this plan was never realized. Before reaching the mainland, he died. His remains are enshrined in the Church of Good Jesus in Goa. He and Saint Therese of Lisieux were declared co-patrons of the missions in 1925. Reflection All of us are called to go and preach to all nations. Our preaching is not necessarily on distant shores, but to our families, our children, 
our husband or wife, our co-workers. And we are called to preach not with words, but by our everyday lives. Only by sacrifice, the giving up of all selfish gain, could Francis Xavier be free to bear the good news to the world. Sacrifice is leaving yourself behind at times for a greater good, the good of prayer, the good of helping someone in need, the good of just listening to another. The greatest gift we have is our time. Francis Xavier gave his to others. The story is taken from franciscanmedia.org. Daily Readings, December 3, 2021 Memorial of St. Francis Xavier Priest Lectionary 179 Reading 1 A reading from the book of Aisha Thus says the Lord God But a very little while And Lebanon shall be changed into an orchard and the orchard is regarded as a forest. On that day the deaf shall hear the words of book. And out of a gloom and darkness the eyes of the blinds shall see. The lowly will ever find joy in the Lord, and the poor rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For tyrant will be no more, and the arrogant will have gone. All who are alert to the evil will be cut off. Those whose mere word condemned a man, whose ensnare his defender at the gate, and leave the just man with an empty claim. Therefore, thus say the Lord. The God of the house of Jacob, who redeemed Abraham. Now Jacob shall have nothing to be ashamed of, nor shall his face grow pale. When his children see the work of my hands in his midst, they shall keep my name holy. They shall reverence the Holy One of Jacob and be in awe of the God of Israel. For those who err in spirit shall acquire understanding, and those who find fault shall receive instruction. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsible Psalm Responsible Psalm The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom should I fear? The Lord is my love's refuge, of whom should I be afraid? Responsible Psalm The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I asked of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate His temple. Responsible Psalm The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stouted and wait for the Lord. Responsible Psalm, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Alleluia. 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 Behold, our Lord shall come with power. He will enlighten the eyes of his servants. Alleluia. Alleluia. Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
As Jesus passed by, two blind men following him, crying out, Son of David, have pity on us. When he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to him, Do you believe that I can do this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. Then he touched their eyes and said, Let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread word of him through all that land. Gospel of the Lord Praise to Lord Jesus Christ We will be watching Affirmation Teaching by the OJCC. Disciples of Jesus Covenant Community is a charismatic community originated in Canberra, Australia. One of their mission is to teach the Church's Catechism, which they call as the Affirmation Teaching. Official Weary Traveling with Jesus is collaborating with international community of the OJCC located in Canberra to include the formation teaching into the readings. The formation teaching is taken from Catholic Catechism that may inspire you and strengthen you in your daily life. It also serves as a continuous reflection that may deepen our understanding on the readings and also the Holy Gospel. So that's the second one. Then the third one is, um, is just re- repetition. It amounts in the name of Jesus, that, that whole thing that's, that's happened. So, so, um, so to identify the lies and the power behind the lies. For example, um, to identify the root of rejection. Name it and renounce it. It's not me anymore. This renunciation is really important. Like when we renounce, we... You break the power of the evil spirit's bondage. Um, uh, uh, you know, we sort of like in some way to open the door to invite an evil spirit in. So when we renounce, we give notice that the evil spirit must vacate. The lease is terminated now. You cancel the lease and show the evil spirit the door, as it were. This is the... Uh, the real value of renouncing is that it, it gives personal responsibility, as I was saying earlier, uh, and it expresses our, our human dignity, our freedom, that you're no longer going to allow this to be part of your life. We're cooperating with the saving work of Jesus. It's not just passive, it's taking responsibility for one's own life. You know, uh, and as an adult, uh, you expose the evil spirit as you basically say it's over I've had enough of this I know where you've been hiding and you can't hide there anymore out so it's a choice not to be a victim anymore but to take responsibility um, like a, a, an abuse uh, victim for example can be lost in like a maze of shame and blame and anger and rage, sense of helplessness, all that sort of thing. And so it's being able to uh, stand in the middle of all that, own the truth of that, but now claim your freedom in Jesus. It's time to stand in faith, believing I'm a son or a daughter of God. They're saved by the precious blood of Jesus. And, and I'll have no more of this. Uh, so this, um, is, I think this is a very important aspect of it, that to actually renounce in the name of Jesus the things that have uh, been holding me in bondage under the plan of the enemy. And it's good, of course, to speak out the renouncing words, because words have power. Uh, as we said last week, like this, what we call performative speech. So the words bring about what they represent. Speak it out in the, in the name of Jesus, you know. In the name of Jesus I renounce, such and such, right? 
So then the, the fourth one is um, taking authority in, in the name of Jesus. So, you know, we know that it's Jesus who has all the authority over evil spirits, it's clear from the Gospels. Uh, and um, so all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, he says. Uh, go therefore. So, but he's given us his authority uh, when we command in his name. And so that command is really important. Having renounced, then we can command. Uh, Jesus manifests his power through us. He brings his kingdom about. It's not, not we who are bringing his kingdom, it's he who's bringing the kingdom about. So to um, invoke the presence and the authority and the power of Jesus, um, we're simply his instrument. Prayer to Mother Mary for the end of the pandemic. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God, in the present tragic situation. When the whole world is prey to suffering and anxiety, we fly to you, Mother of God, and our Mother, and seek refuge under your protection. Virgin Mary, turn your merciful eyes towards us amid this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died and at times are buried in a way that grieves them deeply. Be close to those who are concerned for their loved ones who are sick and who in order to prevent the spread of the disease cannot be close to them. Fill with hope those who are troubled by the uncertainty of the future and the consequences for the economy and employment. Mother of God and our Mother, pray for us to God, the Father of mercies, that this great suffering may end, and that hope and peace may done anew. Plead with your Divine Son, as you did at Cana, so that the families of the sea and the victims be comforted and their hearts be open to confidence and trust. In the present tragic situation, when the whole world is prey to suffering and anxiety, we fly to you, Mother of God and our Mother, and seek refuge under your protection. Protect those doctors, nurses, health workers, and volunteers who are on the front line of this emergency and are risking their lives to save others. Support their heroic effort and grant them strength, generosity, and continued health. Be close to those who assist the sick night and day, and to priests who, in their pastoral concern and fidelity to the gospel, are trying to help and support everyone. Blessed Virgin, illumine the minds of men and women engaged in scientific research that they may find effective solution to overcome this virus. Support national leaders that with wisdom, solicitude, and generosity, they may come to the aid of those lacking the basic necessities of life 
and may devise social and economic solutions inspired by farsightedness and solidarity. Virgin Mary, turn your merciful eyes towards us amid this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died. Mary, most holy, stir our consciences so that the enormous funds invested in developing and stockpiling arms will instead be spent on promoting effective research on how to prevent similar tragedies from occurring in the future. Beloved Mother, help us realize that we are all members of one great family and to recognize the bond that unites us so that in a spirit of fraternity and solidarity we can help to alleviate countless situations of poverty and need make us strong in faith persevering in service constant in prayer mary consolations of the afflicted embrace all your children in distress and pray that god will stretch out his all powerful hand and free us from this terrible pandemic so that life can serenely resume its normal course to you who shine on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope do with and trust ourselves O clement O loving O sweet virgin mary amen our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sins against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be word without end amen O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, those are the readings for today. We hope you enjoy it, and see you again tomorrow. From Willie Traveling with Jesus. Goodbye.